Welcome back to another video and today is a follow-up video from my previous one which was how to 3D print plastic gears. A lot of you seem to really appreciate that video which is awesome. So as promised I said I would create another video for FreeCAD about how to create more advanced gears such as helical, duo helical, herringbone and even worm gears. So today I'll show you how to do a few of those and the good news is that it's going to be really easy, just as easy as Fusion 360 because we're going to make use of a great plugin for FreeCAD. So let's take a look. So I'm working here in FreeCAD 0.19, but this should also work in FreeCAD 0.18. So firstly then, what is an add-on and how can we use it? Add-ons are typically created by users in the community and it's a tool that you can import straight into FreeCAD and use to create additional things for your designs. If I click the drop down for the workbench this year, you can see I've got a workbench in here called Curves. This workbench isn't included in FreeCAD by default, I've installed it separately because it has some great features that you can add to your designs. So now let's have a look how we can get these and how we install them. So we're going to come up to tools, come down to add on manager. Now this add on manager sometimes it's a bit glitchy, it'll freeze, sometimes it won't even load at all and sometimes you just won't see any workbenches here. Oftentimes the macros will load up and you'll see there's a progress bar, it downloads the latest macros. But we're interested in the workbenches tab here. And if we come down, if we scroll down a little bit, what you'll see is FC gear. If you click on that, you'll see it load up a web page here in this container on the right. And it basically gives a little description and it's quite self-explanatory. It's a tool that lets you create different types of gears relatively easily. Now if this is working, if you can see all these different workbenches and the information to you, all you have to do is click install slash update and then restart FreeCAD, and you'll see this workbench in the dropdown here. If that works for you, awesome. If for some reason your add-on manager isn't working, I'm gonna show you another way to do it manually that'll get around that issue. So I'm in a web browser now, and I've come to this page, and I'll leave a link to this in the description below for those of you that are interested in doing this manually. And if you scroll down, you can see we've got a description here, which is the exact same thing we saw in FreeCAD. This is a website called GitHub, which allows people to create repositories so they can upload their projects and code files, which makes it really easy for people like me and you to just come and download this and integrate it with our own projects. So all we're gonna do here, come up to this green button and we're gonna come down and click download zip. Once you've done that, navigate to your downloads folder and you'll see a zip file in there. And what you'll wanna do is unzip it using something like WinRAR or 7-zip and then just leave that there for a second. Next thing you'll wanna do is come to this directory. Now I'll copy and paste this down into the description as well. The one thing you're gonna to have to change here is the username, right? This is my name, the username for my machine inside of my username is this folder structure for FreeCAD. And you can see in here, I've got another repository in here for the Curves Workbench, right? So I installed that Curves Workbench that I showed you manually. If you're on Mac or Linux, I imagine it's a similar process. But I don't use any of those regularly for FreeCAD, so I can't help you out there. If anyone does use Mac or Linux and you know how to do this, please leave a comment down below so you can help some other people. Back to our downloads folder, all we're gonna do here is right click, copy, and we're gonna paste that whole master repository straight into that location. Now we can close that down, come back to FreeCAD. Notice that if we click the drop down, the gear workbench isn't in there. So what I'll do now is I'll quickly restart FreeCAD. You'll see FreeCAD load up now, and that workbench should now be installed and ready to use. So here we are back in FreeCAD. Let's click the drop down, and you can see we've got in there now a workbench called gear. So let's go and click on that. Straight away, we can see on the toolbar up here, there are some new icons, new tools for us to take advantage of in our FreeCAD projects. I'll be honest with you, I've been playing around with this for a while and it is really impressive, just as good as anything I've used in Fusion 360, which I think a lot of you will be happy to hear. First thing we're always gonna do, we're gonna create a new part here by clicking this yellow icon. We'll switch back to the part design workbench, we'll create a body, and now we'll switch again to the gear workbench. So now we have a part and a body that we can use to create our gears. Make sure that you've double clicked on part. You'll see it go bold, that'll make it active, and anything we create now will be nested inside of this part. So first thing we're gonna look at is a regular spur gear. So to do that, we're just gonna click this first icon here that says create an involute gear. As soon as we click it, you can see straight away, no messing about, we've got a gear inside of FreeCAD. So in the part tree, if we click the drop down here for body, 
you'll see our involute gear inside of that. So we're gonna click on it, and then on the left here, there's a menu with a bunch of different settings that we can play around with to tweak our gear. Now, this is pretty awesome. So we can play around with a lot of different stuff. So what I'll do is I'll kind of work this up towards what I showed you in that previous video and the exact gears that I created for my Raptor 2 project. I'm not gonna do the axles, I'll just do the gear and the holes for the weight reduction. That should be enough to kind of get you started so that you can play around with it yourself. So the module I used for that Raptor 2 gear was one millimeter. This was kind of the best I could get for 3D printing. If you go too small, the teeth are gonna be really weak and they're not gonna look very good or print very well. One millimeter is kind of the smallest you can go unless you've got a super tiny nozzle. I used a 0.4 mil nozzle. That does one millimeter module just fine. The height here or the width depending on how you look at it. I had that as 15 mil for my Raptor 2 gears so we're going to add that and remember make sure you hit tab after adding the changes so that it updates the window for you. The number of teeth I also had was 60 so let's add those in. Hit tab. Now you'll see when you add more teeth it's obviously going to make the gear a lot bigger and you can see already this is starting to look like something similar to what I had in that previous video. Now what I love about this is it's actually easier to make changes in this than it is in the script I use for Fusion 360. It's a lot quicker and you can change gears on the fly. So as I said this is a spur gear. This would work pretty well if you created a pinion and you know all the module and everything's all matched up which is really important. By the way if you haven't watched my previous free CAD video that I made about spur gears I recommend watching that because I go into a bit more detail about how the gears need to have the same, some similar parameters so that they actually mesh properly. This video is kind of me just showing you this tool, how to get it and how you can play around with it. Now what's awesome here is if we want to make this into a helical gear, there's a parameter in here called beta and basically this is your helix angle. For the Raptor 2 gears I used a helix angle of 40 degrees so we can add that in here. Hit tab and you'll see straight away it's now changed this from a traditional spur gear into a helical gear. And that was really easy to do and we can jump between these simply by changing that angle there. It really is pretty awesome. Now check this out. If we want to turn this helical gear into a dual helical gear or a herringbone gear, again, super easy. We just come to our table. There's a Boolean parameter here called double helix, which is currently set to false. We're gonna click on that, click on true, hit tab, and you'll see that is now updated for us. And we now have a herringbone gear that looks very similar to the one I showed you in that 3D printing video. There's a couple of other things you might want to pay attention to that you can play around with. Pressure angle being one of them. I used a pressure angle of 14.5 degrees so I set that up as well just to be the same. You can see those changes have now been made and the pressure angle basically is the tapered angle of the teeth themselves. If I increase the pressure angle to say 30, you'll see the teeth of the gear will look more pointed. So you can see that there, they're a bit more pointed. This is again something you can play around with with 3D printing. If you wanna get really deep into this, there's so much you can look at in regard to how this affects the performance of the gears. So I'm gonna change it back to what I had it before, which was 14.5. You can see now that looks a little better. So you can see there how we went relatively quickly from a spur gear to a helical gear to a herringbone gear. And now what I'll do as well is I'll just quickly show you how you can add those holes on the gear to make it look a little cooler and also it's for weight reduction. So let's click our workbench drop down, come back to Sketcher. So we're gonna click the top face of this gear and we're gonna create a new sketch. That'll put us straight down on top of that gear. And I'm just gonna make a couple of holes in here using the circle tool. So we'll go up, we'll grab our circle and we're just going to sketch over this line. I'm going to make this a radius of say six millimeters. I'm going to make this hole at a set distance above the center point, which you should know by now, we always need to do this. I'm going to make that 19 millimeters, which is the exact measurements I use for Raptor 2. And then we're just going to hit close. Now if we hover over our sketch here and we click on the outer perimeter of it, we can come to the part design workspace and we're going to create a pocket using this tool up here. So we're just going to click on that. That'll create a bit, little bit of a hole for you, but obviously we want to go all the way through the gear. On the tab here on the left, we're going to click the drop down, come down to up to face, then we'll rotate around, click the back face that we want to rotate to, and that should create a hole then all the way through to that face. There we go, that hole's been created. It can sometimes take a while or lag a little bit because there's so much going on on this gear. 
give it time and it will do it. So we're just gonna hit okay. If we come back to the model tab, now what we'll do is use a polar pattern to repeat this circle around the gear. So we can do that again really easily. We're gonna select this face here that we just created as a pocket. Then up on the menu, the second one across, or the third one across, sorry, is create a polar pattern feature. Click on that. Now we'll ask you for an axis to rotate around. This is currently already set up. We're gonna rotate around the Z axis. And it's gonna ask you on the left, how many occurrences do you want? I'm gonna go for seven. You can see that's updated nicely for us. So we're gonna hit okay. And there we go. We have a dual helical gear that is identical to the one I designed for Raptor 2. Obviously you can play around here and put the axles in, but those files are gonna be available very soon anyway. So if you wanna play around with those, you can. Little tip here as well, if you wanna change the view to make it look a bit more realistic, you can click this drop down up in the top right, change it to perspective, and it'll give the model some perspective. And you can see it just looks a bit better. One final thing I'm gonna show you is the worm gear, which should be self-explanatory, but I'll show you anyway. So if we go back to the gear workbench, we'll hide this body for now. We'll create a new one. So now I've got a new body. If you just hover over some of these icons, you'll see what it'll say. So you can create a rack gear system. Uh, there's also cycloid gears. You can do bevel gears, which are also awesome. You can even do crown gears in this one, which you can't do in Fusion 360. So let's go ahead and try a worm gear. So let's just click on that, see what it does. So straight away we've got something on the screen, looks kind of like a worm gear. Click our body drop down, click on the worm gear itself. We can change a bunch of this stuff, right? So let's increase the diameter to say 10, hit tab. That's instantly bigger. Now we can make the height more as well. So let's make it something like 20. And straight away you can see we've got a worm gear. And it's that simple. How crazy is that? You can just create something pretty complex in a matter of seconds. Again, you can change the module here. You can reverse the pitch. You can even increase the number of teeth. It genuinely is really impressive and quite a powerful plugin. And to think that all this is free is just awesome. So there we are, guys. That's how you create more complex gears inside a free card. I think a lot of you are gonna love this tool. Be sure to let me know what you're working on in the comments below. I love seeing people applying this knowledge to their own projects. To me, that makes what I'm doing really worthwhile. As always, hope you learned something and I'll see you in the next one. If you made it this far into the video, thank you so much for watching. I just wanted to quickly reach out and ask for your support. If you appreciate these videos that I put out for free on YouTube, please consider becoming a website member to support me. My biggest goal is to do this full time and keep inspiring people through teaching and sharing my own projects. You can help make this a reality by becoming a website member and I'd really appreciate it. In return for your membership, you gain access to my Fusion 360 for Beginners course. You also get access to my 3D CAD files for all of my projects. And finally, you'll gain access to the members only Discord channel where you can hang out with the other members and ask me questions. All links to these web pages I'll put in the description down below. Any support would be massively appreciated. Thank you and back to the video.